The NASCAR Cup race has officially included from Richmond International Raceway, and we see a lot of long green flag runs, a lot of strategy, and RFK and Chris Buescher picking up the victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching NASCAR Cup Series race in Richmond Raceway, the Cookout 400. We had quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go and talk about it. So for the green flag drop in today's race, only AJ Allmendinger would have to go to the rear of the field due to a driver change. Obviously, AJ was competing in the Xfinity Series race at Road America yesterday, and Derek Cross would have to qualify. So at the start of the race, uh, Ty Reddick lead the field from the inside with Kyle Busch on the outside, and Ty Reddick got a really, really strong run and was able to clear for the race lead. On lap number two, Mark Trick Jr. ran into a little bit of trouble. He had some contact at Riggs Dennis Jr., and his car began to fade, and he dropped really, really far back. Meanwhile, Ty Reddick continued dominating and would dominate the early portion of this race and coming off the final corner he would win stage number one with bubble walls finishing in second so then all the lap cars would come down pit road during the first caution with ryan priest basically stepping over the line it had some contact with william byron william byron basically had pushed him down pit road and ryan priest lost a ton of positions and also william byron lost a ton of positions as well so then on the restart, Ty Reddick lead the field from the outside and Bubba Wallace on the outside. And Bubba Wallace got a really strong restart and was able to pass Tyler Reddick for the race lead. Then the gray stayed up green for a long time. You had Todd Gill and Ryan Priest come down pit road first. Then the next lap, you had Brad Kozlowski and Ty Reddick come down pit road. Then the next lap, you had Noah Grace and Kyle Larson, Eric Almarola. Bubba Wallace came down pit road. And I believe Bubba had a bad pit stop at this point. Or actually, he had a good pit stop. And Eric Almarola also received a commitment line violation. All green flag pit stops are able to commence at this point, with eventually Bell Walls having the race lead once again. Meanwhile, we continue going for a long time, and then green flag pit stops began once again about halfway through stage number two, with Bell Walls coming down for run a lap 173, with having a really bad pit stop due to Jack going down and ha basically had to get the car rejacked, unfortunately, taking Bell Walls out of contention for the lead at the time, and would lose a ton of positions, handing the lead, I believe at the time, to Brad Keselowski. Green flag pit stops will still continue, and then on lap 228, you saw a really good battle between Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson battling for 18 position at the time and they were battling really really hard but it would not matter behind him as Brad Kozlowski would continue to dominate and coming off the final corner Brad Kozlowski would win stage number two then all leaders would end up coming down pit road Chris of all actually decided to say take out take the wave around while Brad Kozlowski won the race off pit road so now on the restart, Brad Kozlowski lead the field from the inside with Chris Buescher on the outside. And Brad Kozlowski got a really strong restart and was able to clear for the race lead. The race would continue going and we had green flag pit stops. So once again, first Ryan Priest came in, then Joe Lugano came in. Then he had Chris Buescher come in with Bubble Walls, Kyle Busch, Austin Sinner. And then the next lap, Brad Kozlowski pit from the lead, but he would make a mistake as he basically stopped in the box at a sharp angle, causing a longer stop, taking him out of the lead, and Chris Buescher would have the lead at this point. Danny Hamlin, though, would stay out for a little bit, and then eventually Mark Trick Jr. got the lead, but they were going longer, where they're going to do this only on one stop. Then Mark Trick Jr. went long and basically decided not to pit for a long time, and he eventually came down the road with about 80, with about 90 laps to go at this point, but Chris Buescher having the race lead. Meanwhile, on lap two, on lap 330 of the race, we saw some retaliation from Pocono. Kyle Larson got behind Denny Hamlin, and he would get into Denny Hamlin, forcing him up the racetrack. Denny Rackham just moved him up. I think that's fair. Obviously, they both had a little bit of history from last week at Pocono. I thought the move from him was absolutely fair and absolutely a right move. He didn't have to wreck him. He just moved him up the racetrack. Then at this point, we started seeing green flag pit stops once again with Bragg's Aussie coming down pit road first, along with Bubba Walls, Kevin Harvick, Eric Gamarola. Then the next lap, Ty Reddick, Denny Hillen, Kyle Busch, Austin Dillon came in. Then the next lap, you saw Chris Buescher come in. Also, Ty Reddick actually received a penalty for a commitment line violation and basically would fall out of contention in this race. Down with 53 laps to go, Chris Buescher was able to pass Mark Trick Jr. for the lead, and we all thought that this was going to be the end of the race. However, with 10 laps to go, the first natural caution race to come out for Daniel Suarez, who got spun after some contact for Noah Gregson. I don't know what those guys are doing. You're back at 30th position. It's unnecessary, especially when you're in the back of the pack. You didn't have to throw a caution right there, and this would be an un unnecessary caution. Daniel Suarez has been struggling all day. Same with Noah Gregson, though Noah Gregson did qualify very, very well for this race because he was in a better draw for the qualifying position. But I thought what Noah Grayson did was unnecessary. Same for Daniel Suarez. So then all the leaders would end up coming down pit road, and Chris Buescher would win the race off pit road. 
So now the restart, Chris Buescher lead the field from the inside with Denny Hamill on the outside. And Denny Hamill try to get around Chris Buescher, but Denny Hamill will lock up the brakes and go way up the racetrack and will lose ground to Chris Buescher. So at this point, Chris Buescher will continue the lead. And coming off the final corner on the last lap, Chris Buescher had about a six or seven tenth of second lead over Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano and would pick up his first win of 2023, his first Cup Series win at Richmond, and his third career NASCAR Cup Series victory. And as they're coming across the line, there was a three-car wreck between Austin Sinner, Ty Dillon, and A.J. Allmendinger, who wrecked in the back of the field. Let's now talk about the winner of the race, Chris Buescher. Absolutely incredible day, not just for Chris Buescher, for RFK Racing. They dominated this race. I think they nearly led half of this race because Oscar got 105, 110, and Chris Buescher led 87 laps on the day. And I've been saying for a long time that this team has been back. I didn't know what Brad Kozlowski was going to do when he joined RFK to become an owner, but I think Brad Kozlowski is an absolute genius and has turned RFK around. I think it's one of the most incredible team turnarounds we have seen in a very, very long time. At one point, this team was a 30th place team in the back of the pack not too long ago, actually, but they've been showing signs of its return. They were doing solid with Ryan Newman in 2019. They fell off, though, in 2020, and now they're back to form, and just seeing Chris Buescher win is absolutely awesome, incredible. The second year in a row the team has won. Matt Congratulations to Chris Buster. This team has been showing great improvement this year, and I'm so stoked to see this team go to victory. And cool to see Keselowski win today, but a great day nonetheless for Chris Buescher to get his first win of 2023 and his third career win. I think Chris Buescher is one of the most underrated drivers in the Cup Series field. A great day for Chris Buescher. Massive congratulations to him. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at the race results, and I'll give you my score of today's race. So Chris Buescher picks up the victory. Denny Hamlin finished second. Great day for Denny Hamlin. His car was really good on the long run. He tried to play some strategy that definitely helped him for sure. He was about a third or fourth place car most of the day, but nonetheless, he got a great day at the end, and he finishes in second. Kyle Busch finished his third. How about that for Kyle Busch? I'm going to be honest. I thought coming in today that Kyle Busch was going to struggle because their short track program hasn't been great. But today, their short track program was good, along with how good their pit stops were throughout the day. A fantastic run for Kyle Busch. This is an area I was really worried, like I said, for Kyle Busch coming into this weekend. So for him to finish in the top five is awesome and great. I thought he had a shot at winning, but a great day nonetheless for Kyle Busch. Joey Logano finished his fourth. Talk about a great run for Joey Logano. He came out of nowhere, and his car was solved throughout the day. But he had a quiet day till the end, got up front, and gets a very solid top five finish. Great run for Joey Logano. Ryan Priest finished his fifth. How about that for Ryan Priest? Definitely his best run of the year. I know he led laps in Marsville early in the year, but unfortunately he had a speeding penalty that cost him a shot at a great finish. Ryan Priest straight up had a top five, top ten car all day long. We know this two Ross racing his struggle throughout the 2023 season. So amazing to see Ryan Priest have a fantastic run. He finished his fifth. Great run for Ryan Priest. Brad Kozlowski finished at sixth. This is going to be bittersweet for Brad Kozlowski because I think he had a car that easily could have beat Busher today. But he's also going to be happy, though, because he did win as an owner. But, man, what could have been for Brad Kozlowski? He's been closer and closer to winning every single week, it seems like. Nonetheless, so a very good day for Kozlowski, but it definitely could have been better for Brad Kozlowski for sure. Mark Trix Jr. finished at seventh. I think this team is going to take it considering they were way off today. They were 1.25th in this race. But they played a strategy that definitely helped them out, and they get a very solid top 10 finish. That's what championship drivers do. If you have a bad car, you rebound, you make good calls, and they make good strategy calls, and it definitely helped them. They finished some, but that car definitely did improve throughout the day as well. Eric Amaral finishes eight. They were really fast. I think they had a top five potential car today, and I think that's Eric Amaral's only second top 10 of the year so far. So good to see Eric Amaral having good runs. To us, racing has some good pace and some good speed today, so good to see Eric Amaral finish in eighth. Austin Dillon finishes ninth, probably one of his better runs of the season. I know he had gotten some beef and some tempers with Tyler Reddick last week at Pocono, but I think Austin Dillon will take a top 10. It's been a struggling year, so good day for Austin Dillon in ninth place. And Kevin Harvick finishes 10th. I thought Harvick was going to be a threat for the win. He just didn't have the pace to win the race, but they do get a very solid top 10 finish. He also had a bad pit stop. Solid day for Kevin Harvick in 10th. Chase Briscoe finished 11th. That's the best Chase Briscoe's generally performed in a while. He had top 15 speed, but he finished 11th. Bubble Walls finished 12th. Man, tough break for Bubble Walls. They had a car that easily could have won this race in the beginning. The car just seemed to fade throughout the run. But one thing this team did was they were the best team that was in that bubble run. And they're like 45 or 50 points above the cutoff line now because of this run. They got some road courses coming up. I thought they had a chance to win today. They had that bad piss up that cost them a great run. That didn't help anything. But the car just seemed to fade as the race went on. The track changed and it cost them a good run. 
Nonetheless, so they do end up finishing 12th, but they had top 10 speed throughout the day and scored a ton of stage points as well. I know it's not a win that we all thought it was going to be, but still 12th place is not that bad, all things considered. Chase Lee finishes 13th. I thought Chase Lee was going to run a lot better today than I, than I thought he was, to be honest. He was good in the beginning, but the car faded. Hendrick Motorsports is way off today, in my opinion. And he's the best finishing Hendrick Motorsports driver in 13th place. He's got to run better than that if he's going to make the playoffs. But I think he did make up some points in the cutoff line, so that's a positive all things considered. Ryan Blaney finished 14th. That's about the best they ran all day. They were not great. The Penske cars kind of struggled outside of Joey Logano. He finishes 14th. Ty Gibbs finished 15th. I thought Ty Gibbs was going to finish better. I think he got trapped back in the pack and unfortunately got caught up by the caution at the end. He finishes 15th. Ty Reddick finishes 16th. Reddick had one of the fastest cars in the field, but that commitment line violation near the end of the race cost him a good run. He finishes 16th. Ricky Sash Jr. finished 17, was top 10 early, but faded throughout the day. But he does get a solid top 20 finish. Alex Bone finished 18th, not a great run for him today. He had a great run at Pocono, but not a great run today. Kyle Larson finishes 19th, a really disappointing run for Kyle Larson, considering the fact that I think everyone thought Kyle Larson was going to be a threat to win today. But Hendrick Motorsports, like I said, they were way off. That five car was just terrible throughout the weekend and not a good day. They got to go back to the drawing board if he's going to be a, a threat for this championship. Chris Bush, Chris Rebell finishes 20th. Not a great day for Chris Ball either. This that car was not good in my opinion. He finished 20th. William Byer finishes 21st. I thought William Byer also was going to be a threat to win. He completely struggled throughout the day. He finished 21st. Michael Medal finished 22nd. They tried to play the strategy near the end of the race that did not work for them, and they lost a lot of points today because of that. He finished 22nd. Eric Jones finished 23rd. Not a great run for him. Ross Chassin finished 24th. Again, outside of the race in Nashville. Trackhouse has been non-existent. I don't think Chastain's a championship threat. He finished 24th. Todd Gillen finished 25th. Austin Hendrick finished 26th. AJ Allmendinger finished 27th. Lost a lot of points. I think he actually gained some points on the cutoff line or lost some points, all things considered. But he finished 27th. Noah Grayson finished 28th. Ryan Newman finished 29th. Saw so him to see the Rick Ware car finish in the top 30 and they were legitimately a top 30 team. So good to see Ryan Newman back in the series. He finished 29th. Justin Haley finished his 30th, not a great day for him. Harris Burr finished 31st. Corey LaJoy finished 32nd, disappointing day for Corey LaJoy. Daniel Suarez, a really bad day for him. Struggled, got involved in one of the late wrecks, and sadly finished 33rd. Not a great day for Suarez, just absolutely horrendous. Ty Dillon finished 34th. J.J. Yilly finishes 35th, and Beige McClough finishes last in 36th place. I believe now, if I'm not mistaken, this is now the record for most laps completed by the last place finisher. I think McClough finished only six laps down. So McClough, despite finishing six laps down at last, I think he could definitely take that away. So now, let's talk about the overall race as a whole, and I'll give you my score of today's race. I like seeing all the new teams up front. Seeing RFK being competitive, seeing 2311 competitive, and seeing teams like Stuart Haas and RSR really dominate this race and be great. However, I'm going to be honest. I think this race had good moments. I definitely think it did. But I'm going to say this. I feel like Richmond does need to lose a day going to next year. I'd rather be at Road America next year and they get a day and Richmond lose a day. I think there were good moments. I like the long green flag runs. I like the strategy. However, I don't think the racing itself was really, really good. You had times where the leader got a five or six second lead, and there's nothing wrong with that. There just wasn't a lot that happened this race until the end. So for me, my score of today's NASCAR Cup Series race, I'm going to give this race overall a six out of ten. I do want to correct my score in Pocono. I'm going to give that race an eight out of ten for Pocono, but I'm going to give this race here at Richmond a six out of ten. Wasn't the most exciting race. I thought the spring race at Richmond was definitely a lot better. It's not because of the guy who won the race. I just think the race earlier this year was much better than this race, in my opinion. It's not the worst race of the year, not even close, but this definitely was not a good race, in my opinion. My score is a 6 out of 10. Liked all the new teams, liked the strategy, but it wasn't the greatest race, in my opinion. So, that is good for today's NASCAR Cup Series race view from Richmond. One thing guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, notifications on, so if I win a video, does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Link in the description below that, and comment your thoughts below on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below, and congratulate Chris Buescher on picking up the victory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have a NASCAR news video on the channel discussing news over the last couple of days. we got some SVG news we discussed here on the channel. Then tomorrow, actually Tuesday, we're back, might be a silly season update on the channel. We'll have to wait and see. Also got race picks for the NASCAR Xfinity Series race for Michigan coming out as well. Got a lot of content dropping that I think you're going to enjoy. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.